Well, good morning and welcome here to the chapel of St. Pascal Balon Church on the east side of St. Paul. I'm Deacon Richard Moore and thank you for joining me on this uh, Monday of the fourth week of Advent. It's already here. Let us start in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord be with you. As we gather in prayer, we're always mindful, always mindful, that the incarnation of Jesus reminds us that God loves us and forgives us. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, eternal majesty, whose infallible word the Immaculate Virgin received through the message of an angel, and so became the dwelling place of divinity, filled with the light of the Holy Spirit, grant, we pray, that by her example we may in humility hold fast to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is not enough for you to weary men? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is from the 24th Psalms. Let the, open, <clears throat> let the Lord enter, he is the King of glory. Let the Lord enter, he is the King of glory. The Lord's of the earth in its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Let the Lord enter, he is the King of glory. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? or who may stand in his holy place. He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Let the Lord enter, he is the King of glory. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior, such as the race that seeks for him, and seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Let the Lord enter, he is the King of glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. O key of David, opening the gates of God's eternal kingdom, come and free the prisoners of darkness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel, angel Gabriel was spent, sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and ponder what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? 
And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her that was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, indeed, we are in this fourth week of Advent. The good news, if you haven't done your Christmas shopping, you got a full week this year. Christmas is as late as it can be in Advent, giving us a complete four weeks of Advent to be in prayer, silent prayer, preparing to the Lord. But as you can see today, things kind of change for the first three weeks where we're concentrating on that second coming of Christ. And now our focus is shifted to the coming of Jesus, the incarnation of God in humanity. And we prepare ourselves, we're reading this Saturday we read about Joseph and his dreams, but now we're, we're reading about Mary. And really I see this theme with our first reading today about discerning God's will in our life. How do we, how do we figure out what God wants us to do? I mean, that's a big part of our prayer life, probably hopefully this last three weeks, that's a big, a big part of your life. Of how do I prepare myself and follow the Lord be ready for that second coming. What does God want me to do? And I think we get a lot of clues here in our readings. Where is God going to speak to us? Well, let's look at David. I mean, not David, but Mary. And if you go to Nazareth, there's kind of a debate over where this angel appeared. The Catholic Basilica of the Annunciation, huge, beautiful church, is built over supposedly Mary's home at the angel appeared to her there and in her parents' house, Jehoiakim and Anne. But then the Orthodox Church has a, a much more modest but yet very beautiful chapel church over the old town well, saying that the angel appeared to her there while she was going about her daily work of getting water for the family. And even if she was in the house, she was probably most likely cleaning, cooking, doing something to help the family. So it was in the midst of her everyday life that this angel occurs. It's the same for us, that God is going to come to us in the midst of our daily lives. And a lot of times we may not recognize that. I think that's what prayer is about, being able to look back over our day and ask herself, where did God appear to me today? And to maybe dive deeper into some of those things we might think are God speaking to us, especially things that we need to discern what God wants us to do. So there's that time of pondering, as Mary, she pondered what sort of greetings. Might. Mary's beautiful about taking things to her heart and pondering them, praying with them, discerning them coming to a better understanding of them, but she also questions, and we need to question, we need to test, as St. Paul says, we need to test everything, and we test it against the gospel of Jesus, is what we think we hear God calling us to in harmony with the gospel of Jesus. If it is, then we, we need to pursue it. It may not always be what God wants us to do, or what we're meant to do, but at least we don't do those things that aren't in harmony with the gospel. Because those things that we aren't called to will fall away pretty quickly anyway. So that's what we need to do. We need to pray about those interactions in our day, see if God is calling us through them to something, and to do, ponder that and to discern it and question it. But then at some point, we just need to say, yes, I'm going to try this. I'm going to move forward and see where the Lord takes me. Sometimes the Lord will take us down some dead ends, but that's also valuable, that we find out 
What are we called to? Maybe it was our own vainglory, our own ego that wanted us to go down a road that sounded so good in ministry to the Lord. I've been there, I've done that, I've gone down roads that sounded so good, but when I look back, it was only about me. It wasn't about serving God. But those things quickly point themselves out to become apparent. So we just try and do our best. One thing we can always do that's in harmony with the gospel is pray for our world, our church, and those around us. Let us pray for our church in this fourth week of Advent that we can be there to help prepare the world to recognize the light of God, Emmanuel, Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Pray for the world in this time of joy and peace that world leaders can work towards lasting peace, to bring an end to wars and conflicts and oppression. We pray to the Lord. Pray for our country and especially our state in the midst of yet another COVID surge. Pray that people can not be selfish, that they can work for the good of others. We pray to the Lord. Pray for those that are sick and suffering in any way, that the Lord Jesus would come to them, comfort them, heal them, give them strength and walk with them. We pray to the Lord. Pray for those that have died and gone before us, that they would be in the loving embrace of God forever. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, we offer you these prayers confident that you are listening and confident that you will answer them. And we offer them through our Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we are always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you. I offer you peace this morning. I offer peace to those who might be around you. But together, let's spend some time in prayer and silence, praying for those that we know need peace in their life. Let us offer an act of spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. Grant divine protection, O Lord, to those you renew with this heavenly gift that to those who delight in your mysteries you may give joy of true peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining me for some time here in prayer. I hope that this fourth week of Advent that it's a good time for you of preparation to celebrate Christmas with great joy and hope. Have a wonderful week, have a blessed day, and have a beautiful and wonderful Christmas. God bless.